Growing up, I moved around a lot, and I still move around a lot. I think that's something that's true of simply being human in the 21st century at this point. Now, after studying astronomy and being inspired by it, I could be at home wherever I am and watch the patterns in the sky rise for their seasonal dance over the celestial sphere. And that brings me this immense sense of home that I think is crucial for our well-being. It wouldn't be the wilderness without the stars. Our very idea of place involves a starry sky overhead when you come to some place like Grand Canyon National Park. The sky is one of those things that has stimulated generations of scientists, generations of people to wonder about the world. Religion, philosophy, mysticism, astrology, science, all of those have their roots in wondering about the sky in wondering about our place in this universe. Grand Canyon is an amazing place to experience the night sky. We're some of the darkest skies in the country, primarily because we're situated high above a good portion of the atmosphere here on the Colorado Plateau. So we're at 7,000 feet here on the south rim which allows us to see the night sky without uh, the distortion of atmosphere, uh, molecules, aerosols, dust. If you look at a light pollution map of the United States, the East Coast is pretty much completely whitewashed with excess light and light pollution, whereas in the Southwest, there are still completely dark patches left. And so they've become somewhat of sanctuaries for the night, and Grand Canyon is certainly one of those sanctuaries. In the city where I live, I can look up into the sky and I can count all the stars there. In fact, that's a question that almost every child has at some point. How many stars are there in the sky? Well, sadly, I know that in the city where I live, the answer is 12, and one of those is probably an airplane. As a result, there's very few incentives for me to ever look at the sky anymore. And 50% of the world's population now lives in cities. Under those types of skies, what reason does a child ever have to look up anymore? There's nothing there. There's nothing to be seen. And so we've lost something. We've lost something really fundamental, not just about our natural world, but how we see that world, how we see ourselves, how we approach the great questions of life. We want to protect the night sky in the park because there are so many visitors here who would not have the experience of seeing the Milky Way anywhere else. We have some good lights here in the canyon and we have some bad lights here in the canyon. And our goal is to change those bad lights so that we are not contributing to light pollution inside the park. One of the most important things that visitors can do when they're looking at lighting in their own homes is do they really need the light at all? That's one of the best energy efficient savings and night sky friendly things you can do is determine if you need the light at all. So Grand Canyon National Park was established in 1919, but there are still external threats to the integrity of the night sky here to this day. Already we can see the sky glow faintly of Las Vegas. We can see a little bit of sky glow from Tuba City, a little bit from Flagstaff and Williams. 
And there is, even to this day, proposed development right on the outside of Grand Canyon National Park's entrance that would undoubtedly have negative effects on the pristine nature of the night sky here at Grand Canyon. One of the best ways, in my opinion, to experience the night skies here is to come to our annual star party event that we have every summer. We've been doing it for decades at this point. I want the people who are coming here to have the experience of seeing something they may never see again in their lives. We do this because we love it. We love working with the people. We love the ex exclamations of just, oh wow, when they see something in the telescope. I've had kids think that we painted Saturn on the inside of the telescope because they've never seen it look like that. When I look up into a star-filled sky like that on display every night in Grand Canyon National Park, I feel a sense of beauty and joy and actually a sense of belonging. When I see that Milky Way stretching from horizon to horizon, I know that I belong. I know that we, here on Earth, are part of something vastly larger than ourselves. We are part of a collection of 100 billion stars. And of those 100 billion stars, we alone, as far as we know, have the ability to understand the beauty around us. We are made of the same thing that the stars are. We are made of atoms that were born in the hearts of stars. We are stars made sentient. And that's what we can see when we go out and we look at a dark sky above Grand Canyon we can see that beauty of which we are an integral part.